I have shared tips for successful nonprofit grant writing and grant proposals in past videos, but today I'm going to do something a little bit different with you, and that is react to an actual real life successful nonprofit grant proposal. I am really excited to try this out with you. I look forward to hearing what you think about this format and this type of video, so be sure to let me know in the comments. Welcome or welcome back. If this is your first time to my channel, hi, I'm Amber Melanie Smith, and I am a nonprofit founder and executive director of the nonprofit that I started. I make videos here on YouTube all about everything I've learned about creating a social impact through the nonprofit world, whether that's starting a nonprofit or fundraising or growing as an organization, creating a social impact in other ways outside the nonprofit world and so much more. So I hope that you find this video helpful, that it helps you raise some money to help change the world in your own special way. Be sure to check out my other videos for more tips and strategies. And of course, if you like this video and find it helpful, um, don't forget to give it a like and subscribe to my channel um, for more content like this. If you're looking for more training and resources, I also have a website, foundertofulltime.com, where you can see more of what I do. So as I said, in this video, I'm going to show you a real life successful grant proposal. I'll talk a little bit about what I think made it successful, some things I liked about it, and maybe a couple things I might have done differently. So let's get into it. So what I'm going to show you here is an example of a successful grant proposal written by this organization. This organization is called Puppies Behind Bars. So here's their website here. You can see um, they work with service dogs and do a lot of great work with them. So they wrote their successful grant proposal to this organization called the Planet Dog Foundation. So already just by the name, I can see that there appears to be some good alignment here between the organization and the grant foundation. And just so you know, the example grant proposal that I'm going to show you is part of Candid Learning's uh, examples of successful grant proposals. So if you're interested in studying uh, successful grant proposals more, I encourage you to check out this resource. It might help you out. They've got, you know, example cover letters, letters of inquiry, proposal budgets, etc. So just another good resource for you. All right, let's get into taking a look at the actual grant proposal. I'm going to start by sharing just a couple of observations here. Um, this whole thing is, let's see, just a couple of pages long. So it's a pretty short proposal. And I can see I've landed here on the budget page. I can see from this budget um, that this is probably a smaller organization. This um, does not appear to be the entire organization's budget, of course. just It looks like this is just the um, budget for the particular program that they are applying for funding for. So we'll get into the budget a little bit more later. But like I said, this whole thing is just a couple of pages long. And it starts with a cover letter here. Um, you know, observationally, it looks like they addressed the foundation um, program officer. It looks like actually this is the executive director by name. So they personalized it. That's nice. Um, they start by telling their story. You know, who are they? Where have they come from? Um, you know, they talk about starting in, in 2005 and they set out to establish this organization and the program that they're, they're going to be talking about later here uh, to promote human interaction in the homebound el elderly community by bringing our puppies on socialization visits to their homes. Aw, so <laughs> immediately I'm having an emotional response to this grant proposal and I actually think that's a really good strategy um, to talk in inspiring terms about your mission right up front because people forget that funders are humans too and <laughs> humans have emotions and are compelled to support causes based on emotional reasons often, hopefully also paired with logic, but um, you know, drawing someone in with that emotional and compelling story right off the bat is a good strategy. 
A couple of other things, you know, I mentioned before um, about the names of the organization and the funder's name, and it, it just so happens that it's very clear by the names that both have to do with dogs. Um, but the point that I want to make is it's very, very important when you are applying for grants to make sure that the funder, the foundation or the, the corporate foundation or whatever, whoever your funder is, that they're going to be a good fit for your organization before you even attempt to apply. And if you do not work on making sure that there is a good alignment, and I'll talk in just a second about what I mean by that, before you apply, then you might waste your time writing a grant for a funder that would never even consider your cause at all. And then they're going to say no, and then both of you have wasted your time and it's really sad. So having a good fit is really important. And what that means is essentially your values and their values and the issues and causes that they care about uh, are the same as the issue or cause that you are addressing through your nonprofit. So. This is an animal and service organization. They apply to a foundation that wants to help animals. So good, very clear, very obvious alignment there. So just doing that research ahead of time can save you a lot of time and headache and also save the funder time. Now, going into um, a little bit more about this proposal, I can tell by looking at it and how they describe um, what they're requesting funding for, that this is a program grant. So there are lots of different types of um, grants that you can apply for. You can apply for funding for your capacity building, um, so investing in things that will increase the capacity of your organization, making important staffing or infrastructure investments. You can apply for technology grants, you can apply for training grants, and you can apply for program grants. That is funding that will specifically fund a program one or more programs that your organization is offering. These are among the most common types of grants that are out there, so um, I'm not terribly surprised by that. Those are just a, a couple of quick observations that I have taking a look at this. Um, now I'm gonna get into just some interesting things that I see and, and point out some things that I think were done really well um, and some things that maybe I would have done differently. Of course, remembering that this is a successful grant application proposal, so whatever they did worked for that particular funder, um, but you have to, you've got to customize it to your funder's needs. So reading through this proposal, one thing that I really liked about it, and I alluded to this before, was the heavy emphasis on storytelling, but they also back up that storytelling with stats. So I, I really appreciate that. I think you have to have both. You've got to, you know, show that you can inspire people and, you know, draw them in emotionally, but you also have to back that up with the numbers showcasing your impact. So I really appreciated that. You know, they talk about their, their sort of history, their origin story up here at the front, then they start talking a little bit about their progression throughout the years. It looks like they're, they're talking about the growth of one of their programs here. So we have recently increased the number of seniors who receive visits twice monthly to 13, which translates into 312 visits per year. And then they talk about how they want to increase those numbers even further by the end of the year. They start with that stat. So they're laying the groundwork here to justify their, their future request for funding. They put those stats forth. They put their goals here. I really, really like that. And then they back it up by sharing the story of one woman. It looks like her name is Helen here, um, who's 59. She's been suffering from multiple sclerosis for 10 years and just talking about how the program has really impacted her life. So that's very powerful. You've got your stats and you're backing it up with storytelling. The proposal continues to talk about in different ways from different angles, the looks like the types of growth that they're hoping to achieve with more funding support. So they talk about one of their staff members, their director of volunteers, who's been really driving the success of this program and how she has been dedicating a lot of her time to running this particular program um, and how they expect that staff time to increase because of the growth and the success of the program. But then they talk about the challenge 
of the challenges that they're facing with this program. And again, all of this is, you can tell that they're continuing to lay the groundwork to explain why they need the money later. So in summary, you've got, you know, the compelling emotional pull, the story in the beginning, and then you have um, the growth and the success of the program and, and how impactful it is for the people that it touches. And then you're talking about your challenges because after this, they're going to talk about how funding will help them address some of those challenges. So they're building the whole story out. Another thing that I really appreciate here, and I think that a funder would appreciate, is this paragraph. They're talking about a challenge that they had, as I mentioned, you know, how um, it looks like they're talking about some challenges specifically with recruiting volunteers in a particular way. But they don't stop there. They then talk about how they went ahead and addressed that challenge. And some of the solutions they were able to come up with to um, to to tackle that that problem that they had. This shows the funder that this organization is first transparent because they're talking openly about the problem that they had, but secondly, they're innovative and they're problem solvers. So they're they're agile as an organization. They're able to handle the challenges that come to them. I think as a funder, I would really appreciate that. Again, here in this next paragraph, they're talking about the growth of their program, the evolution of their program, um, how they have expanded to additional facilities with their puppies program. Um, they also talk a little bit about some of their values. So they, they say here, true to the organization's credo that education is a key component of our work, uh, one of our team members developed a course uh, to teach inmates who they explain earlier in this proposal are, are one of the ones are I'm sorry, one of the populations training the puppies, teaching these inmates how to uh, be the most effective dog trainers and dog handlers that they can be. So they're talking here about not just how they are bringing puppies to this location or that location, but their process, their, their quality assurance, if you will, how they're making sure that this program is going to not just be um, a program that has wide reach, but a program that has deep and impactful reach. And that is, of course, because they, they put some intention and thought behind how that program is going to be delivered. So they're really giving the funder a sort of behind the scenes look at all of what they do and how they do it. That's very powerful. It really helps the funder create a visual in their mind of what it's like to be a part of this program. Now, one thing is we don't get to see the funding request until about page three. Um, this is not something I would typically recommend having your funding request this late in the proposal. A rule of thumb that I tend to follow is put your funding request and that is how much you're asking for and for what purpose in the very first paragraph of a grant proposal because you want your funder to know generally um, exactly what you're looking for and why right up front. And then you spend the rest of the proposal backing up your request. In this case, they have it on page three, but I actually think it's okay and here is why. They talk about how um, this foundation, Planet Dog Foundation's grant of $2,500 accounted for 15% of our pause and reflect expenditures in, in the year prior. So this is not a new funder to this organization. There's a relationship here. This is a foundation that has already funded this organization. And so having the request a little bit later, I think is okay, because you they already know a little bit about who you are. And there's a little bit of trust there because they funded you previously. But the other thing here is they talk about how they were able to successfully use that money before. So with that money, we were able to do X, Y, and Z, we were able to remain uh, secure the remaining financial needs from other foundations, and then with your money, we were able to train more volunteers, provide over 240 puppy trips to seniors' homes, et cetera, et cetera. Then they talk about how they hope this grant will be a larger grant. So, you know, previously the foundation gave them 2,500. Now they're asking for 5,000. And I think that since they were going to increase their ask, it was really smart to talk immediately before that about how they used the previous money and what an impact it made. So in summary, they started with a story. 
They went into the stats. They talked about the growth of the program. They talked about the challenges of the program. They showcased themselves as an agile organization capable of handling problems. Now they've made their ask. They talked about what they were able to do with previous funding. And it looks like here they are ending with another story. So they're kind of bringing it around full circle, ending with a story and a testimonial here. It says, Gordon, a 91-year-old man who receives his visits from our organization, summed up his experience by saying, pause and reflect the program name, gives me an interest that I wouldn't have otherwise. And for a man, this is very important. The wives are always doing things, chatting, belonging to an organization, but the men are inclined to sit back and wither away. Oh, this gives me something to get up and look forward to on Saturday. So powerful testimonial at the end here. They wrap up the letter portion with a simple thank you. And then they get into their budget to showcase, um, you know, how, how the program expenses are broken down. So if, if the funder says yes to the $5,000 that they have requested, it will help contribute to some of these program expenses. I want to point out a couple of interesting things here. I really like that it looks like they've considered the true cost of this program here. You know, they're taking into account the fact that they have to have a shuttle driver and pay that person's salary. And they're also accounting for their director of volunteers salary. That is, I think, so important because that is the person, as they stated earlier in their proposal, who is driving and managing most of this initiative. So they've got to cover that person's time as a paid staff person as part of the program expenses. They also have some supplies for volunteers here, some recognition events and research events and training events. And I'm just, I love that they included all those things. People forget that, you know, it takes research and you've got to appreciate your people and acknowledge your people and train your people to have really effective programs that make a deep impact and that can retain your amazing volunteers. So accounting for all of these things in your program costs is super smart, and I highly recommend that people do that. I think a lot of people assume that, um, you know, program expenses can only include things like supplies or um, the specific technology just used on that program, but that's not true. You have to think about all of the different expenses that go into effectively running a program, and it looks like they've done that from the gas and the tolls that they're going to have to pay. They've got their insurance here, the salary I mentioned already, and then not just supplies, but also the research, the uh, volunteer and um, client appreciation, and then the training. Okay, so I've talked a bit about, you know, a lot of the things that I liked in this proposal. Um, it's obviously a successful proposal, so the funder liked it, and that's really what matters here. Um, I talked about, like I said, the things that I think they did successfully. If there's one thing that I think I personally would have done differently is um, I tend to like to break down my grant proposals by sections with, um, you know, large headers uh, at the top of each section. So mission statement, um, organization history, organization budget, program details, etc. And the reason I like to break up the text like this, um, and of course, this is especially relevant for longer proposals. And like I said, this is a shorter one. But I, I like to break up the text because I find that it makes it easier to read. Funders have to read dozens or sometimes even hundreds of grant proposals regularly. So making your document just formatted in a way that is easy for them to read is just a nice courtesy that they will appreciate. So that is probably one thing I would have done differently, um, of course, especially if this were an even longer proposal. But that's really it. You know, I think it's got a lot of powerful stuff in here. Um, like I said, storytelling backed up by stats, showcasing your team's skill sets, your very clear budget that accounts for all of your true costs. Good job, puppies behind bars. All right, so there you have it. Puppies behind bars, super adorable, I know. Let's get your thoughts on this. If you were a funder, what would you think of this proposal? What did you think in general? How has it inspired you to think about how you might write your own grant proposals?
definitely share all that in the comments below and let's get a conversation going. As I mentioned before, if you're looking for some additional training and resources, whether it's on starting a nonprofit or creating a sustainable fundraising plan, check out my website, founderedfulltime.com, where I have my trainings and some additional free resources there too. If you're looking for some additional help beyond that, I also have a newsletter that I send out for nonprofit leaders and change makers of all types. The link to subscribe to that is in the description as well. And you can subscribe and opt out anytime you would like. It's there to help you out. So I hope that you find that helpful too. Finally, if you're on Facebook, I have a group, Change the World or Bust. We've got a couple thousand folks from all around the world having conversations about how they are making an impact and asking each other questions, come on by and join us there. You are welcome. Thank you once again so much for watching. I'm still so uh, astonished and grateful at how this little channel has grown with your help. Um, thank you so much for watching and I once again hope you found this helpful and I hope to see you next time. Bye.